Not all autoimmune diseases fit neatly into a box, but what happens when your symptoms overlap multiple diagnoses? Let's break down the difference between undifferentiated connective tissue disorder and mixed connective tissue disorder. Hello, this is Dr. Siddharth Damber from Chicago Arthritis and Rajar Medicine. I specialize in non-surgical treatments for musculoskeletal conditions, rheumatology, regenerative medicine, and metabolic health. My goal is to help you live pain-free and optimize your health with cutting-edge treatments. Today, we're diving into a topic that confuses some of my patients. Interestingly, while it's a very niche topic, it's one that comes up more often than many people may realize. And frankly, it even confuses some physicians. What's the difference between undifferentiated connective tissue disorder, or UCTD, and mixed connective tissue disorder, MCTD. These are both autoimmune conditions. They can look similar on the surface, but they behave very differently and require different treatment strategies. So if you've been told that you have one of these diagnoses, or if you're in that frustrating phrase where your diagnosis isn't clear yet, this video is for you. To begin with, what are connective tissue disorders? Connective tissue diseases are autoimmune conditions where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its own connective tissues, things like joints, skin, muscles, and internal organs. Examples include lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, Sjogren's syndrome, and myositis, such as dermatomyositis or polymyositis. Now let's focus on two conditions that don't fit as cleanly into that diagnostic selection criteria, undifferentiated connective tissue diseases, UCTD, and mixed connective tissue disease, MCTD. UCTD stands for undifferentiated connective tissue disease. This is a diagnosis given when a person has signs and symptoms of an autoimmune or connective tissue disease, but doesn't meet the full criteria for a specific diagnosis, such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Common features in UCTD can include joint pain or swelling, Raynaud's phenomenon, where you have color changes in your fingers and toes with cold exposure or stress, sometimes mild skin rashes, a positive ANA test. But here's the key. Nothing is clearly pointing to just one di diagnosis. It's like a wait and see phase. In fact, some people with UCTD may never go on to develop a more defined autoimmune condition. They may stay stable for years. Others may evolve into lupus, scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, or another well-defined disease. On the other hand, what is MCTD? MCTD stands for mixed connective tissue disease. This is different from UCTD. MCTD is a well-defined condition with specific diagnostic criteria. It's considered a true overlap syndrome, meaning it includes features of multiple connective tissue diseases all at one time in one person. The most common connection would be lupus, scleroderma, and polymyositis. Key features would include Raynaud's phenomenon, again, where your fingers turn purple or blue discolored in the cold weather. It's a circulatory issue. Swollen fingers, joint inflammation, sometimes muscle inflammation, esophageal dysfunction leading to trouble swallowing, and sometimes lung involvement like pulmonary hypertension or interstitial lung disease. Most importantly, people with MCTD almost always test positive for anti-RMP antibodies and high titers. That's a big di di diagnostic clue. The other key point here is that in MCTD, the individual has met criteria for multiple different autoimmune conditions at the same time. So let's lay this out side by side, compares, comparing UCTD and MCTD. Features of UCTD include that it's not fully defined, versus MCTD, which is fully defined. UCTD has symptoms that tend to be milder or early autoimmune signs, while MCTD has features of three plus defined autoimmune conditions. In terms of antibody testing, UCTD will generally be ANA positive, while MCTD classically will have RMP antibody positivity. Progression in UCTD tends to be mild, tends not to progress as much. While on MCTD, there is a risk of progressing a little bit more aggressively. From a treatment standpoint, for UCTD, tends to be mild treatment or monitoring. In general, the medication we'll use tends to be in the milder end. 
Well, for MCTD, if there's organ involvement, we tend to treat that more aggressively. So while UCTD is more of a placeholder diagnosis, a way to keep track of early autoimmune activity, MCTD, on the other hand, is more of a full-blown condition that needs more aggressive management. So why does this distinction matter? It's important to know the difference because the treatment strategy is very different. For UCTD, if symptoms are mild, we may just observe with regular follow-ups and monitoring. I often recommend lifestyle changes, supplements, and regular monitoring. If the immune system is acting more up or ramping up, then we'll generally start treatment, frequently with a milder treatment such as hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil, but if needed, more strong disease-modifying treatments. For MCTD, on the other hand, because it typically can affect major organs like the lungs and heart, we tend to need to treat early and sometimes more aggressively, especially if there's cardiopulmonary involvement or muscle inflammation. In all cases, early diagnosis can help prevent long-term damage, and regular follow-up with your rheumatologist is essential in both cases. Understanding the difference, and your rheumatologist should understand the difference, is essential when it comes to not only diagnosis, but also treatment as well. Some common misperceptions. UCTD means I'm not sick. That is not true. Your immune system is showing signs of being overly active. It just hasn't picked one specific disease to go after yet. It still deserves attention and care and sometimes medication treatment. Another question that I hear or frequently asked question or misconception is that MCTD is a milder version of lupus. And that's not correct. MCTD can actually be just as serious, especially if lung or heart issues are involved. And lastly, I've heard people say, if I have a positive ANA, it must mean I have lupus. And again, that's not necessarily true. Positive ANA is common in UCTD, MCTD, and several other autoimmune conditions. It's a clue, but not the whole picture. In the end, when it comes to your diagnosis, you have to look at not only your lab tests, what are your actual symptoms, what do you have objectively on examination and imaging, and that's how we put together a diagnosis for you. So how do I approach these diagnoses? Here's how I handle this in my practice. First and foremost, listen to your history. The pattern of your symptoms, how long they've been going on, how are they escalating, what makes them worse or better is absolutely critical. Next is physical exam. I look for any objective signs of inflammation, such as joint swelling, any skin inflammation changes, muscle weakness, any other signs indicating that inflammation or organ involvement may be at risk. Next, we look at labs. In particular, we look at antibodies. That can include antibodies such as your ANA test, RNP, double-stranded DNA, SSA, SSB, and other antibodies as well. And then imaging if and when needed. Ultrasound and MRI can show inflammation in joints, muscles, and then sometimes in the lungs as well. You need to track this over time. We will follow you closely, sometimes for years. Autoimmune diseases evolve over time, and sometimes the diagnosis becomes more clear. In many ways, autoimmune care is about being proactive, watching closely and knowing when to act and when to pause and be conservative. So what can you do if you've been diagnosed with UCTD or MCTD? To begin with, be very clear about which one you have be very clear with your rheumatologist, what are the features of your condition that fit you into that diagnostic criteria and what are your actual active inflammation issues. You then want to follow up regularly with your rheumatologist. Autoimmune diseases can be dynamic. Do not go years without checking back in. That's not the right way to monitor you or to get treated. You need to track your symptoms. Write down things such as fatigue, joint pain, rashes, mouth sores, breathing issues. That's helpful to bring up to your rheumatologist. Stay healthy with lifestyle choices. Exercise regularly. Eat anti-inflammatory foods. Prioritize sleep and reduce stress. Again, work with a good and qualified rheumatologist. These can be complicated conditions. You want someone who understands nuance and they will be able to get you through this healthy and safely, following with the things that are important to you and to do that in a way that is long-term best for your health. So here's a recap. UCTD is an early undifferentiated autoimmune condition that might stay stable or evolve over time. 
MCTD is a full overlap autoimmune disease that has features of multiple autoimmune conditions that generally does need more active and aggressive treatment. Antibody tests can be important here, especially the anti-RMP antibody can help to distinguish between the two. Regular monitoring and shared decision-making are key for both. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our website at chicagoarthritis.com for more expert advice on staying pain-free and healthy. If you're dealing with chronic joint inflammation and want a personalized evaluation, feel free to reach out to us here at chicagoarthritis.com. See you next time and live well.